Hello and welcome back to Football League World TV. I'm uh, your host, Alfie Burns, again. And, and tonight we've got a very special Huddersfield Town takeover show. Uh, joining, joining me is Ben from the Terriers Talk. How are you getting on, Ben? I'm good, thank you very much. Yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm very well. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this show. Obviously, I, I cover Huddersfield Town for, for Football League World and, and obviously to, to be able to sit down and, and get into some good sort of Huddersfield talk with you this evening. I think I think we're in for a, for a good show, so... Fingers, Lovely. fingers crossed for that. Yeah, I mean, and and, and we're starting, you know, with, with some really, really big news that has that's come out of Huddersfield in the last couple of days with regard to Lewis O'Brien. Yeah. So yesterday we we got the news that that Lewis O'Brien had, had signed a new three year deal at Huddersfield, which which sees him through till the summer of twenty twenty five. It comes after you know quite intense talks and links with Leeds United over the summer and and. Phil Hodgkinson revealed that there was a, a £13 million package turned down from, from Huddersfield uh, for the service of O'Brien. So it, this is obviously massive news for Huddersfield then. And they've got O'Brien tied down to a to sort of long-term contract. So, Ben, I mean, for, the first things, what's your, what's your initial reaction to the O'Brien news? Uh, I think it's absolutely vital that we've got him uh, tied down. He's, he's without a doubt one of our, our most important assets and he is without doubt one of our best players and our standout player, I think. Um, I think he goes quite underrated at times and quite unnoticed with the, the work he does in the midfield because I think there's going forward and going back there's obviously Hogg and Sonani, um doing those roles but I think O'Brien stacks that perfect kind of in between and without him I think we'd, we would be doing potentially a lot worse off than we are this season uh, I think last season he wasn't as, as, as good as he was the season before under the Cowleys with his breakout season at Huddersfield but He's come back into the side this season. Obviously, he had the injury issues last season at the start, but this season he's just hit the ground running. It's it's absolutely ideal to see him uh, sign on such a big contract. You know, it's it's interesting you say that there because obviously the the, the breakthrough season under the Cowleys was really good for O'Brien, and and, and yeah. maybe he wasn't quite at that level last year. But but from my point of view, I think that Coburn's style really really suits him, and I think that he's he's got a head coach that's 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 working with him now that could really, really elevate his game. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think, obviously, I don't like to put comparisons between uh, Carbran and Bielsa, but I think the systems intertwine quite well. And I think that uh, Lewis O'Brien, if he did sign for Leeds in the summer, I think he would be the click replacement for Bielsa uh, looking long term. So I think in that kind of situation, I do think he is that kind of perfect player um, in that role. And he just is the absolute, he's the workhouse of a team. He's an absolute engine. Uh, so it is really, really clear to see why he did have Prem suitors this summer. Yeah, absolutely. And and you, you talk about the, the the Premier League interest in him there. And, and this new deal, it you know, it doesn't mean that he's he's going to be a Huddersfield Town player until twenty twenty five. You no. know, somebody somebody could come in for him and, and and pay real big money. But what it does from a Huddersfield point of view is it stops them, you know, being at the hands of a real you know cheap low offer, and it and it protects their asset nicely. You know the talk of the thirteen million pound package that was that was offered. That was including add-ons and everything like that. I'd just like to know your thoughts, Ben, on how much do you think Lewis O'Brien's worth in the current market? Uh, I think right now I'd say he's worth to Huddersfield Town. I think fifteen million. Um, but I think, in all fairness, a, a ten to thirteen million pound region might have been feasible for Premier League clubs because of just how after coronavirus and everything like that. I think all things considered, that is still an awful lot of money. Um, so to a Premier League club, they would might potentially be worth um, spending ten to thirteen million, but I think to Huddersfield Town, he's worth at least fifteen. We've just had a comment in as well from from Josh Ramsey. Which I'm just going to pop up now. Thirteen million pound, I would have taken it. So that's sort of you know a little bit of a different opinion there, but but you know one that one that I think a lot of Huddersfield Town fans might might agree with the thirteen million pounds that that they would have taken it. But as you say, Ben, fifteen million pounds, and I think that that's quite. You know, relevant and, and need speaking about because what he's worth to Huddersfield Town might not be what he's worth to another another club because he is that important to Corbyn and the club, isn't it? Yeah, I think I think so. I mean, just to touch on the comment, I think it's the same thing as the the Carlin Grant deal. I think if you look at the thirteen million, I think with it being a lot of add-ons, I just don't think it would be right to to get, for example, say a lower fee and then struggle to get somebody in of the same quality in the same kind of role at such a late late part of the window. Um, Obviously, Carlin Grant uh, at the end of last window, uh, we didn't really see to seem to have him replaced. Uh, Josh Caroma obviously stepped into that role. However, the likes of Scott High, as much as 
he is potentially going to be the player that steps into that role in the next few years. I don't think he's currently at the level to progress the club forward, which in a season where we need to progress forward and kind of establish ourselves as a championship club again, um, that will be fighting for playoffs potentially this season or the season afterwards. I think keeping uh, Lewis is something that had to be done this summer. Yeah, and just sort of that leads me nicely into into the next question and the next thing that I'd like to talk about. Phil Hodgkinson, you know, he's he's come in for criticism before from some fans, but I think the way that he's conducted himself around the O'Brien deal has been really, really good. You know, just from your point of view, does he does he deserve credit for not cashing in and, and accepting a low offer? Yeah, I think I think a lot of people were criticising him uh, when he first came in. I think I was I was one of them. Um, however, g- given the time that he's had, uh, he's I think he's he's kind of justified himself now. I don't think that um, he's exactly had the chance to properly um, to run the club as he'd like with uh, everything happening financially. Um, so I don't think it's exactly been the easiest start to his uh, tenure as as the uh, chairman of Huddersfield Town. But I think it has to be said that to turn down thirteen million quid is something that you don't often see, especially at Championship level. You see thirteen million quid being accepted. A lot of the time, you see less than that being accepted. A lot of the time, for players that uh, they might not be as good as O'Brien, but you're still looking at that kind of caliber of player. So I think a lot of credit has to has to go to Phil uh, Hodgkinson there because realistically, he very much could have turned uh, taken that offer and had a look at signing somebody else. But it just proves that there is a very very big project happening at Huddersfield Town currently. Yeah, and and there's other players within that project that, that are going to have to have their future looked at in, in probably the, the next couple of months. Harry Toffolo, yeah. Josh Caroma, are they two that you think that the club need to get tied to longer term deals? Yeah, I think so. Um, it, it was in a press conference that he did with um, Catherine Aller and um, Stephen Chicken, um, I think about a month or so ago now, where he said that they were they were looking at contracts specifically at Toffolo and Caroma. I think uh, they were the only two mentioned. Um, I think it's absolutely vital for us. We know Last season, we were we were incredible down that left-hand side before Kroma got injured and then it kind of tailed off a bit. So to keep that kind of three on the left-hand side who are arguably our three most valuable players, to keep to tie them down to longer-term deals would be essential for the club moving forward because even if it doesn't mean they stay there for a full three-year, four-year length contract, it means that they will have a higher market value just simply because of the fact they've signed that new contract. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that you're right in saying there that that, that sort of triangle down the, down the left-hand side of, of Toffolo, O'Brien and Caroma is absolutely crucial. And we'll come on to the Forest fixture, you know, in a, in a little while. But, but that was the sort of avenue in the first half that looked like giving Huddersfield a route back into that game. So just flipping over to the other side of the field, there's a player that's, you know, been talked about, you know, everywhere you turn when it comes to Huddersfield Town in Sorba Thomas. You know, obviously he's he's relatively new to the club in in terms of he's, yeah. he's been there under a year. But but how long do you think it, it is before he he you know needs fresh terms and, and that kind of thing at Huddersfield? I think he needed fresh terms probably a few weeks ago, um, just simply because of the fact that I don't think he'll have been on a first team contract when he first joined. Uh, in his first few interviews, he said the club weren't going to rush him in. Uh, the injury to Josh Caroma proved that he was going to be in the li- uh, in the squad, not in the lineup straight away, and he featured a few times last season. Uh, he didn't look at the player that he did that he does now, um, which is just adds a bit more to that kind of shock factor because I don't think anybody expected six months on that Sarva Thomas was going to be our player of the season so far. And I don't think it's really unjust to say that this early on because he has just been absolutely electric for us and just unplayable the same, the same kind of way that Carlin Grant was two years ago, just simply because nobody knows kind of what he what he is capable of. So I do think he is he's a player that does need new uh, contract terms because if not, somebody will pick him up for a lower, lower value than he is worth. Yeah, pl- plenty of talent definitely in, in that Huddersfield side at the minute. And, and next up, we're going to discuss the man, the man that's coaching them. So Carlos Corbran obviously arrived at Huddersfield you know, in, in the summer of 2020, he got off to a decent start as, as Huddersfield manager playing, you know, a decent brand of football. But but it's, you know, fair to say that it's been, or it was a difficult start to 2021 for Corbyn and, and victories were really hard to come to. And obviously Huddersfield found themselves sucked into a, something of a relegation battle last season. And there was plenty of, of calls for Corbyn to go. Um, I guess the, the first place to start, Ben, is, is are you happy with Corbyn and, and what he's offering the club at the minute? Yeah, I, th- I think he's he's working with a very 
hand-me-down squad, I think it's fair to say. Um, it, we've seen him start to get his own players starting to trickle through now, uh, which I think is is fully needed for any coach. But he's working on the kind of hand-me-downs of a, of a Cowley squad, a Wagner squad, even elements of a Seawork squad that just haven't been moved on over the years. Um, now that they're finally, the, 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 the real essential players from those squads have gone on. Uh, we're now looking at a very, very different squad and he's, we're now starting to see what he can actually do with his own squad. I don't think it's a final product and I don't think we're anywhere near that final product yet. But I do think we are very, very slowly getting there um, with the likes of big names staying with a few more players uh, in and out of the club. I think that we will very, very soon see the actual final product under Carlos Corbran. And we're getting some support for Corbran from Josh in the comments as well. Carlos saying, now that's 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 pretty emphatic, isn't it? I think yeah. one one thing that I've always thought with with Corbin, and and this is even when things weren't going particularly well last season, the fact that that it was just the injuries and and having his best players available to him all the time that the results were hard to come by when he was having to deal with things that any manager would struggle with, let alone one that's, that's stepping into a difficult job already as he's yeah. as in a really early stage of his management career, and I think that that was sort of evident at the start of this season when. You know, the Derby result and the Fulham result were, were really quite poor. But then as O'Brien comes back into the fold, as Toffolo comes back into the fold, you know, we've seen a real pickup in results. And and that's just, you know, my opinion of it. I just, just wondered if, if you agreed with that, Ben. Yeah, no, I, th- I think that um, our, our kind of style of uh, employment of coaches now seems to be looking at managers who haven't really had as much... Um, time in the front line you look at the Carly brothers you look at uh, C where even Wagner you can kind of put in that mold of uh, coaches that haven't really had too many many opportunities at the uh, club like Huddersfield um so I think it's, it's it's encouraging to see that's how we are now looking at managers um everyone knows that it was a difficult role to come in so obviously uh, we've just come down from the prem and in the middle of a season where we really should have done a lot better uh, off the back of the Cowleys playing football that at the best of times wasn't the best to watch. Uh, and I think that in the original statement from the chairman, it was said that we brought in someone with attacking, attract- attractive football. So it really does kind of show a sign of intent that that was what was w- wanted. Um, I think you hit the nail on the head there with the injuries. We said it quite a few times last season that um, Injuries were the forefront of why we didn't perform as well as we could. Um, he's already got a bareback squad. You add that in with injuries to four or five first-team players and you lose your, your club captain um, for however many months Christian was out. I think you really do look at a squad there that is lacking a lot. You now you now see uh, Toffolo, uh, Karoma, O'Brien featuring week in, week out, Sarba Thomas, and a really strong and consistent back line. And we do look a very much um, solid squad this season compared to how we did last season and even the season before that. Yeah, I think I think the recruitment over the summer does does deserve some credit. Obviously, it wasn't millions and millions of pounds were thrown around, but I think some real sort of shrewd, you know, free agents came in and and, and yeah. other deals, including the loans. And just sort of like moving on over to the systems that that Coburn's been using this season. It's been mainly a three five two three four three. That we've seen, you know, it's quite solid. It's it's sort of evolved from from what he turned to last season when results were hard to come by in in, in his attempts to make Huddersfield harder to beat. But but he often talks about being flexible within those systems, and and I think that's the the sort of show of a coach that he is in in terms of wanting his players to be able to do different things and not just stuck in their ways. Do, do you feel that the wing back system is is the best one for this crop of players that you've got at the minute? I think either three four three or the uh, the four three three is our ideal um, scenario because it just it can move so fluid in uh, attack and defence. I think obviously it's no doubt that Toffolo and Pippa are two of the best attacking fullbacks in the league. I'd say, um, and defensively at times they they do struggle. That's uh, no question about that. So having that three at the back of just three very solid defenders partnered with Hogan O'Brien, who will come back and sit back if needed to be. Um, just really bolsters our, our chances going forward as well as being very strong at the back. So I do think that the three four three really is the the primary formation, um, especially with the, the likes of Al Sarb Thomas has been playing this uh, this season um, and how consistent he has been uh, with, with his role, especially when we sign him to play as a, a kind of left wing back slash left winger. And now we're seeing him on, on the flip side as a right wing back slash a a right winger, so I do think it is a system that works well for us, and not only for us, but I think it works well for Carbrand because he can 
he can identify two or three different uh, tactical styles in that. Yeah, just just touching on someone that you've mentioned there in in Pippa. He's obviously out injured at the minute. He's got a groin injury, yeah. and and we're expecting him back later in in twenty twenty one. You know, do do you feel like his his return when it eventually comes could potentially spark something of a of a return to the four three three that we saw in the early days that Corbyn was in charge? Uh, I think, if I'm honest, I think it'll probably stay in the the three four three with Pippa just kind of slotting in on the right hand side and Sala being put into a more advanced role, and I think that is the the ideal scenario. Um, I mean, even speaking about Toffolo, Toffolo has been said that uh, he can fit in as a back, as a left sided centre back in a back three. So that just gives us even more options. But I do think Pippa could be that player that just adds a little bit of something extra because he has that willingness to cut inside, but he also does love to go to the byline and cross, which is in this division so essential. And with the likes of Mipo and Jordan Rhodes, who are both tall strikers uh, who have come in this window, I think it could be something that really does work for us, especially with the amount of crosses that we look to put in. I think some I saw a stat the other day saying Sauber Thomas had put something like 77 crosses into the box this season. Um, and if you put if you have a fully fit Jordan Rhodes or, or a Mipo there, I think that is, that's going to uh, come in goals and it's going to come in uh, quite heavily. Yeah, and I mean, you know, you've just sort of touched on it on it there. P- Pippa coming back and potentially linking up down that right-hand side with, with Sauber Thomas, it it's something to really look forward to from a Huddersfield perspective, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, I, I really do think that them two could work together well. And obviously, whilst he's been off, I'm going to guess that he's, he's been working on the tactical side of his game. Uh, he, he did get a lot of criticism for his uh, defensive awareness uh, at the tail end of last season. So we haven't really seen him too much since about May, uh, if not if not before then. So um, I'm really hoping that when he does come back, he is just that kind of final kind of player that we really do think we can see because we got him on a on a low fee for a player that had, had European experience which is is quite shocking for the price that we did pay which just shows how well we are actually doing in the transfer market. Yeah absolutely. So so next next up we're gonna we're gonna look at what was a, a disappointing defeat last weekend to, to Nottingham Forest and, and look at what's to come. So Huddersfield were, were beaten last weekend 2-0 by Nottingham Forest, a, an early Lewis Graben header and a, and a Lee Nichols own goal, which was which was very, very unfortunate, really. You know, did did the damage. And and I, I sort of felt my view from the press box was that, that Forest did a little bit of a job on Huddersfield. Would, would you agree with that, Ben? Yeah, I, th- I think everybody really expected it to be a kind of Huddersfield domination. And it's quite unfortunate that it wasn't, but I don't think really... Forest were a side that you could predict coming into this weekend. Um, there was a number of candidates before this weekend and it now looks like Steve Cooper is probably going to be the one to come in, especially with the 3-4-3 formation that they played. Um, and it just, it felt like one of them games where we'd done the research on the players, but we didn't do the research on the player styles. And that is, it's a bit disappointing, but at the same time, you can you can also look at it as a case of, it's a learning curve and in this division, we have to have them. We can't expect to win every game and, I'm almost glad that we've had a, a real um, kind of shove uh, to kind of improve these performances against these lower rated sides because you look at it now, we've had poor performances against the likes of Derby and now uh, Forest too, and we're both at the bottom end of the table. So you really do have to look at it and say, this is what's going wrong against these sides. How do we improve X, Y, Z? Yeah, any Huddersfield fans that, that are still with us, if you'd like to get in the comments and, and let us know what, what, what your thoughts were on the defeat to Forest at the weekend, that'd be good. You know, I just want to speak with you as, as well, Ben, about the atmosphere that was, you know, building ahead of the fixture. You know, it was, there was a real feel-good factor around Huddersfield and, and that's something that, you know, we've not really seen at the John Smith Stadium recently. And it's been building, obviously, over the weeks and, and results have helped, but, but that must have been, you know, good to be a part of and good to feel on Saturday, even, even though the defeat was there. Yeah, I think I think the atmosphere around the club. I think for so long it's been almost toxic in a sense. So just to just to have the kind of positivity in the air that there is at the moment. Um, Carl Shedlal pr- produced a statement quite a few weeks back now demanding a change. Otherwise, um, the atmosphere was just got it wasn't going to follow suit with performances and that positive performance needed to happen for the spot to stay as it was in the stands. And I think we are really seeing uh, the players kind of just accepting that now and showing that they actually do understand what it means to play for Huddersfield Town again. It's it's so overwhelming at times to just see players that will run through walls for one another and that is something that 
got us promoted in the first place. So to see us back and kind of playing that same kind of football and just having that underdog kind of identity, it's, it really does feel like we've got Huddersfield talent back because I do feel like we lost that in the Premier League at times. Yeah, and, and you've got a side now that, that you know you can really relate to and, and there's some massive, massive talent in there when it comes to the likes of O'Brien, Toffolo, Karoma, Thomas, Pippa. You know, we, we, we can reel off a massive list of players that, that yeah. the fans really enjoy watching. Now, I just want to touch on one individual that, that does divide opinion and I know that you've discussed him on your own podcasting and that's Danny Ward and, and how he played against Nottingham Forest. I, I felt that he sort of got engulfed by what, what the three Forest centre-halves did. Just, you know, want to get your thoughts on, on his performance. Yeah, I, th- I think he's been quite isolated and I think it really now is the the time for me for to kind of come into that starting lineup and make that position his own because as much as Ward has had, has had spells at other clubs and, and has proved that he's been uh, good at times, he's, he's really excelled off the bench um, and he was really well known at Cardiff to excel off the bench. So I do think that now it's the time for him to kind of just take a, a more laid back role at the club. He's obviously getting on a bit and he's not really impressed too much this season. So for him to potentially fall back um, and become the backup striker to, to Fraser Campbell or, or Roder Becco, I think that is really the role that has to be played now because he's far too inconsistent for, for a club like Huddersfield where we need to be kind of going back up the table to, to, to around the playoffs because whilst he has he has his moments of, of brilliance, for example, like the, the Reading game where he, he went around the keeper and that had real confidence in him, it just kind of seems like in the space of a few weeks, he's already lost that again, which is it's quite worrying for a striker of not only his age, but of his experience. Yeah, and, and, and any Huddersfield fans, you know, we want to know who you want to see leading, leading the line. So, so please do get in the comments and, and let us know. You know, the Championship as it is, Huddersfield have had a had a free midweek, which is quite rare in the Championship, but, but we're yeah. back in action this weekend and, and a trip to Swansea City. You know, it's it's not the easiest of games, but it's not the hardest either. You know, are there any uh, any sort of key changes in personnel that, that you see minus the, the maybe the change up front? Uh, no, I think I think it's got to be relatively the same lineup. Um, I'd argue that that the lineup hasn't really been at fault. I think it was just a case that we just didn't prepare enough. But uh, on paper, I don't think there's really much that can be changed um, because the players that have been playing week in week out now for the past few weeks do look to be gelling um, and to, to bring a few other players into that. So you say you bring in Naby Sarr, say you bring in Scott High, I, I think that just kind of sets us back maybe a week or two in terms of how the squad has been playing and functioning together as a unit. So I think to make any changes would be quite daft, if I'm honest. No, I, I agree with you there. Obviously, Corbyn will be, will be hosting his press conference tomorrow, so we'll get injury news tomorrow as, as, we're, yeah. as we sort of record here. We don't really know what what the state of play is in terms of the squad. But but I do agree with you. I think that, you know, maybe a change up front might be on the cards, but but the rest of the side sort of looks after itself. And the 11 that was playing against Forrest is more than good enough to, to go and get a result in Swansea. You know, just touching on the Swans, yeah, they play a possession-based, you know, style of football under Russell Martin. You know, do you, do you think that's going to suit Huddersfield this weekend? Yeah, I think that... Um... Obviously, we've we've got two kind of different tactical styles now. I think there's obviously the the real player passing kind of style of play, and then there's we'll let opposition teams do that, which is what we saw last season against QPR when we got our first away win in what felt like forever at the time. And I think it was it, since October that win was. Um, so I, I do think that potentially we're going to look at a, a quite resolute Huddersfield side, potentially looking more at a five rather than a three, um, with Toffolo and Sauber kind of sitting back a little bit more. So it will be a different kind of Huddersfield to watch, but I think at the same time it could um, it could be one that we see a lot more often potentially against these sides this season that haven't um, been as as well played as uh, what they have been in previous seasons. I mean, you saw against Sheffield United the kind of uh, football that we played, we were just quite happy to soak up pressure and try on the counter, which eventually did work um, with the chance that we did get, but I think it will be more of the same this weekend, but I don't think that'll be the the go out all and out fixture, uh, all out and all uh, tactics for Carbron for the rest of the year. Yeah, I mean, there's some really dangerous players as well, isn't there, on the counter attack? The likes of, you know, O'Brien, Karoma, Thomas, and Toffolo breaking from from wing back. They can do some real damage on the counter. Yeah, no, they're they're absolutely brilliant at what they do, and I think that's something that we've 
we've lacked in fullbacks for quite a while. Um, just that little bit of danger and that little bit of unknown uh, to them, because especially with Sabre, you look at you look at what he's good at, and realistically, that's something that he's he's not really going to get too much better with the uh, game time. The, the 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 core essentials are absolutely brilliant. His pace is electrifying. So it's just really game time that will just fine line the, these uh, skills and just make them just a little bit better. Same with Toffolo. I think he's he's so much more suited to that wing back role rather than the full back because he, he he just does love to attack and we saw that with his contributions. I mean, even if he does get injured, we can look at the likes of uh, Josh uh, Josh Ruffles to come in, who uh, at Oxford had the same kind of role that Toffolo does and got quite a few contributions last season. So I do think we are covered um, in case there is injuries, but. Having those two wing backs as opposed to full backs just does help us so much in the attack. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going I'm to put you on the spot now. I want, I want a score prediction from Swansea. Uh, I think 2 1 town. I'm going ah. to be a bit out there. Nice and confident. I think, I think that for the sake of, you know, this is the Huddersfield town takeover show, we, we, need, to be, we need to be positive. I'll, uh, I'll go for a 2 0 away win. I, I think that Huddersfield will, will get back to winning ways this weekend. I hope. So that that sort of concludes what what we've got on the agenda for the, for this Huddersfield Town takeover show. Ben, I'm I'm just going to let you sort of step in here and, and plug your own Terriers Talk podcast because you've got a special episode dropping tonight, haven't you? Yeah, we've got uh, we've got an episode coming up with Michael Heffler, uh, a town legend in in all of our eyes, uh, and it was I think one of the best um, guest shows that we've we've filmed. We obviously had Andy Booth on and uh, Ryan Mather uh, earlier as well. So it's it's we're getting quite uh, well known within town, and we we obviously hope to have more on. But it was it's a really good episode. We spoke about the kind of his time at town, his time at Forest, thing, what he's doing back at the club. Um, so it was it was just a really positive episode to to get filmed. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's, we were talking off air before. He's such an infectious personality, and it must be, it must be great for you to have him back at Huddersfield. Yeah, I, th- I think he's he's a person that. Um, I think he is quite large to play a part in uh, how we are now because obviously he has been in that environment of where we went up and I think he is going to be that character that if we do go up again, he will be that player that will help the younger players, he'll help the older players, but will also just help the fans as well because he is just that sort of middleman and I don't think we've had that in the club for quite a while. Obviously, we will have had players in the same role that he is now, but I don't think they'll have been as involved within the club and, and within the fan base as he is. Yeah, I'm sure it's a great show and that's an absolute must listen for any Huddersfield Town fan, I'm sure. So as I say, that that concludes this week's uh, takeover show when it comes to Huddersfield Town. We, we've got a packed schedule though tomorrow on, on Football League World TV. We've got the betting show in the morning with George Harvey. We've then got a Middlesbrough takeover show hosted by Sam Rock, and then, and then finally we're going to have the weekend preview, which which I'm back for. So, so look at you, you get to listen to me again. Thanks again for joining me, Ben. It's been it's been great to chat to you and, and I'm sure we'll have you back on in, in the future at some point. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. See you again soon. Thanks. Thanks.